So in today's lesson, right, uh, we are going to do uh, something called web scraping. Uh, web scraping is actually a very, uh, it's not uh, unethical, okay? Uh, certain sites, for example, like Wikipedia, um, is designed for, uh, for it to be scraped because they actually want to make information available for everyone to get access to. And uh, whatever information that actually is in Wikipedia is scrapable. That means uh, they actually want it, they actually want the world to know about, uh, uh, that's, that's the whole uh, purpose of Wikipedia. So like that, uh, many sites have made it available for you to collect information. If there is a password and there is some sort of authentication in order for you to get log in and then get access to, then there is a, uh, already a, a block, you know, uh, there is already a, 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 a requirement for you to get access, uh, to get prior permission before you access the data. But I'm not doing any, any of that. I'm just accessing information that's already available on the internet, all right? Um, so when you look at it, that perspective, right, the internet is actually uh, a, a place where information is shared openly and it's the benefit, it's for the benefit of all, right? So if we take that perspective, uh, we are not actually uh, doing anything illegal by reading uh, open, uh, uh, freely accessible web pages, all right? The only difference is that now, instead of me going through a browser, I'm going to use a robot, okay? Uh, and uh, that's how basically Google uh, created their search engine. They created a robot and that robot went to every possible website there was, there was and they made an index of it. And that's why they became the best or the fastest search engine because they already searched for uh, everything that you could possibly ever search and created an index. And the moment uh, they, you had made the search, you, you, you thought that whatever you were searching was unique, but actually they had already programmatically created all the possible different types of searches that you could ever make. And they already kept an index of those searches and they just gave you the index as soon as you made that search. And uh, it was a very intelligent system. It's called the pigeon ranking system. Uh, and uh, because of that, Google became the most uh, famous, most popular, fastest, whatever uh, search engine during that time. And there was a huge search engine war between Yahoo and Google and uh, Alta Vista. I'm sure you probably not, not know of these names, uh, but there, there was a time when the, the internet was dominated by search engines. All right. So um, coming from that experience, now what we're going to do is we're going to create our own robot and our own robot to go and search uh, a particular website and start looking at information that is stored inside the web page. Okay. So I'm going to use Wikipedia and iPhone, of course, the most popular mobile handset. You know, uh, it was a computer company that actually began to make phones. So it was a huge revolution and, um, and uh, uh, it's got a very uh, uh, grandiose history past in terms of its CEOs and how they managed to create um, a product that, that uh, so uh, in demand in the world today. And uh, so it's a nice uh, example to, to look at their their uh, uh, history and you can get it in Wikipedia. So you like this, uh, you can get a lot of information on Wikipedia and Wikipedia is actually designed for you to scrape it. So in, 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 uh, in, in Python, we call it scraping or a, a basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape out all the junk, all the HTML junk and the CSS junk and, and the scripting junk, whatever that is inside the page and just go for the content. Okay, so before I get into all of that, I just need to give you a little bit of an introduction of how a website is actually uh, laid out. Okay, 
uh, the easiest way to look at the source code of the web page is to right click on your browser and you will see view page source. Okay, when you do that, you will see the HTML uh, coding. All right, it's called HTML because it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So this is actually uh, a format that was built by uh, the web uh, community at that time, uh, Tim Burns, uh, who actually created the HTML protocol. So it is a, a bunch of commands that tells the browser how to represent the page. Okay, so the actual content is hidden inside here somewhere, all right? And it's a lot of junk uh, that it has to create in order for us to view the page like how we view it normally, all right? So all of this is actually recreated by the browser using HTML code. So if you want to build a website, you need to learn how to write HTML code or what HTML code actually means, all right? So they have very uh, techy sort of jargon. Uh, for example, uh, uh, div stands for division, and then P stands for paragraph, and they have uh, divs and you have means uh, unordered list. So the, 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 there's a set of maybe 200 or 250 um, commands that actually help you to create a website. You know, things like uh, unordered, uh, UL is unordered list, uh, LI means it's a list, and then it keeps going on and on and on. Then you have A for uh, anchor, all right? So these are inside, inside each uh, uh, element, right? There are attributes, okay? So we have inside an anchor tag, you have an attribute called hyper reference, href. All right, then you have a title. So these are all standard. And if you want to know more about this, you can go to the WW3, uh, 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 what is that school, W3 school, and it'll give you, it's got a lot of documentation that helps you to learn HTML. Uh, so you can learn about HTML basics and stuff like that, just to get an introduction to uh, how actually HTML actually works, all right? So this is a very simple HTML page. So you can see that it's got tags wrapping around it. That means it's got a HTML tag at the start and then the HTML tag at the end, all right? So it's all wrapped around like boxes. So the one of the best ways to actually learn, uh, understand this is to right click again and to do inspect, okay? When you do inspect, you can see the elements. See the elements are already broken up into uh, they've already simplified the elements inside uh, inside here, all right? So uh, you can see there's the HTML tag, all right? So, and then inside there's a head tag and a body tag, and then after that followed by some iframes. So if you open the, the tag, a body, all right? And if you look at the layout, uh, wait a minute. Ah, so this is the best way to understand how the web page is actually designed. It's actually boxes, all right? So you got the, the outer box, which is the HTML box. And then inside there, you have the body. And then inside the body, you have a paragraph. And then inside the paragraph, you have list items and so on and so forth. So it's like it's like a birthday gift, you know? You know I don't know whether if you've been played this trick where they have a box and then it's wrapped around another box and then another box and then another box, all right? And then finally, uh, they give it to you and then you have to unbox it and box it and box it and that's part of the gift. And then the gift probably would be like a really small uh, pack of cards or something, but in a, in a, you know, probably in a, in a refrigerator box or something like that, you know? So, so that's basically what a HTML page is all about. It's designed like boxes, all right? So, so scraping the web page is actually unboxing. It's like unboxing a, uh, a web page. That means I, I first I strip out the HTML, then I strip out the body, then I look at what's inside the paragraph or, you know. So, so I hope you understand uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm saying right here because this is a very, very simple example of, of what a HTML page should look like, right? Without all the muck and everything. So. So there are certain technical terms that you need to understand. So for example, HTML is defined as an element inside the document, okay? So the, 
So the web page is actually called a uh, document object model of, we call it the DOM, D-O-M, all right? So the DOM has got elements in it and each element has got attributes. For example, you can see this div here has got an attribute class, all right? Attributes is values that we can specify that is unique to that particular element, all right? So, so every element uh, can have attributes. So now we can search. Uh, using the uh, Python scraper, we can actually search for a specific element or we can specif uh, specifically search for uh, attribute that we are looking for, all right? So the attributes can be many, okay? There can be many types of attributes, but the attributes give the element a lot more character, all right? So for example, uh, uh, this is a class. A class means that it's using uh, what is known as a style sheet. Okay, this is a, 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 a style sheet where I can say that the body has got a background color of light blue. All right, so the, the style sheet is actually helping the web page, uh, web browser, give a lit, lot more functionality, uh, behavior, character, uh, feel. To the page okay so they go hand in hand html and css instead of putting all the uh, code inside the html page they've split the design uh, out of html and kept it as a css file it's just another uh, uh, text file okay and it is uh, it is sewn together uh, with the html page because um, if you see the hit tag, it will already have references to the CSS pages, all right? So inside the HTML page already, we have defined these are the CSS pages that I will be using in this web page. So it's asking it to uh, preload uh, these pages before you actually load the actual web page. So this is how we design uh, HTML pages. So we don't have to put everything inside the HTML page, we can actually uh, keep it separate and we can actually uh, make references to the HTML page uh, in there, right? So, so the same way, there is also some scripting, all right? Script files. Script files means like um, I wanted to do some animation or I wanted to change some values, then I would use uh, JavaScripting. JavaScripting is also another very good language to learn uh, because it has, it has also gained a lot of popularity among young developers. And uh, now you can build backend applications, front-end applications, all with JavaScript, all right? So JavaScript is a very, very serious, actually JavaScript has already overtaken Python, but Python is still very good at uh, handling text and so on and so forth. So, uh, going from Python to JavaScript is not very difficult, just a little bit of a change. And JavaScript has got nothing to do with Java, all right? It's just that it's called JavaScript, but it's actually got nothing to do with Java. And then there are new flavors of JavaScript coming out called TypeScript and so on and so forth, right? We don't want to get into all of that. Uh, these IT guys got nothing better to do, but keep creating new stuff uh, so that, you know, keeps them relevant. And uh, so... Uh, 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 so this is basically the structure of a web page. Okay. So why I did this is because when we go back to our lesson, and if you have downloaded the lesson, uh, you will see that uh, that uh, 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 you you we will be start looking at uh, this particular library called uh, Beautiful Soap. Okay. Uh, sorry, Beautiful Soup. Okay. I always get the O and the A mixed up. Um, uh, so uh, this is the is the library that allows me to search the entire uh, web page for certain elements that I'm I'm looking for. So what is going to be my target is that I want to scrape this table right here, and I want to scrape this table into. Um, into an Excel sheet, let's say, all right? So, but I can see that it's a bit complex because it's got, you know, a span here. It's got another row span here. So it's gonna be a bit tricky, all right? 
But what I do is, first of all, I need to understand the, where this is sitting. Control F, all right? You can just do a Control F to do the, the search function. You paste it and it's got model in 26 places. So we know model was an empty space. So uh, I want to find the start of the table where it says model and uh, Okay, so uh, it's not showing. So let me see operating system support. Maybe that will be more unique. Yeah, so here, okay. So we found the uh, operating system limit, but it's got, uh, okay. So yeah, you can see that uh, it's using the table element. All right, so uh, using, uh, so basically we need to know what we're going to uh, search for. Only then we can start, uh, uh, you know, targeting that particular uh, element inside the whole web page. Because if I were to do paragraph, I'll get a lot of stuff, but I want to zoom directly into the table, right? So how do I do this? Now, the first thing you have to do is run this code because we have to install Cloud Scraper. Now, I'm, I'm just being a bit ambitious here. Cloud Scraper is actually, uh, uh, what is that? It's going to jump, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, th there's something you must know about the internet. Uh, they have content delivery networks. That means the content can be uh, actually hosted in a location, but it's static. It's not actually dynamic. So the Cloud Scraper is another Python package that allows me to jump the content delivery uh, site and go to the source, okay? Because uh, for example, uh, Cloudflare is a company, you probably uh, not, you, you probably not be bothered about this, but um, Cloudflare is a company that provides a service that allows you to host your website uh, on their servers uh, at a very, very low cost so that it brings the content closer to uh, the entire world. They have a map, I think, uh, that shows you the whole world and, um, uh, and um, it's basically a content delivery network and, and it's a very, very uh, powerful service and a lot of, lot of the content providers uh, use it, especially news portals like CNN and so that they don't have to uh, spend a lot of money uh, hosting their uh, content all over the world. They use uh, content uh, aggregators like this or they call, it, call them content delivery networks. Now, so in order for me to bypass these content delivery networks and go to the source, I actually use Cloud Scraper, but you don't have to because Wikipedia is not, it's going to dump the, the entire HTML page for you. So you can uh, remove this if you do not want to use it. And here I am emulating. That means I'm trying to say that my robot is actually a Windows machine coming from a Chrome browser and it's not a mobile and blah, blah, blah. And this is the actual website that I want to access, which is the Wikipedia iPhone site okay and then um, i'm going to do the scrape okay i've created a scraper here uh, i'm posting in the url which is the uniform resource locator or uh, you they they, they, are, they sometimes it's also called the uniform universal resource indicator that is the web page and i'm giving it the uh, status code of 200 and then uh, I am going to uh, print out whatever that I have read. Uh, so I'm going to, this is the one that actually uh, uh, does the reading where I read the text and I save it as HTML. And then I call B4. B4 is actually beautiful so, uh, soup. Beautiful soup is actually a very, very popular um, uh, 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 Python uh, uh, module, all right? It's um, 
I'm just like trying to look for the uh, documentation file. Um, so this is the, the beautiful SOAP uh, library documentation. It's free. It's, uh, it's an open source uh, tool and uh, it is widely used for uh, scraping uh, websites. And they actually give you a lot of example on how to, uh, uh, to do this, all right? Here they have, um, uh, we have, they have used a very simple example of a simple HTML page. And uh, you can see this is how uh, a HTML page is written. And one thing nice about Python, you can just put three single uh, double quotes starting and ending and everything inside it becomes a long string. So this is emulating the entire uh, simple web page as HTML doc. And then we pass HTML doc as a uh, uh, what is that uh, as the string, all right? And when we put in uh, a parameter called HTML parser, that means the, the doc, this string is of type HTML. So then uh, that HTML is then read into SOAP, okay? SOAP is uh, now an array of all that is inside here. So it's going to be an array of boxes. So just by doing SOAP.title, we'll actually read the title page title value all right you can see there's a title value here the uh, dorm house story so that becomes the title and then you can do title name title string title parent name you can you can just keep uh, going deeper and deeper into the entire web page line by line you can also do a find find all a's that means it'll give you an array of all the anchors Anchor as in like, uh, you can see it read the whole page and it's pulled out anchor here, this anchor here. So you got one, two, three. You can see that there is a uh, attribute called class and then it's got an attribute called href. So anchor is where when you, when you have a, it's basically a hyperlink. So uh, we can click on this link called LC and the LC will lead us to this page. So that's what this is actually doing. Uh, so these are the ways of actually extracting all the links from uh, a web page. All right. So, uh, so this is actually giving you the examples on how you can expand your search uh, quality, right? So we can also find all uh, uh, by attribute, or we can find a specific uh, attribute that is equal to link three. So this one is, uh, when you say link three, you can see the ID is specified as link three, and then you're pulling that particular uh, whole um, element, okay? You're pulling the whole anchor element, and that anchor element is right here. Here, the whole anchor element is right here. Now, uh, we can unbox this, okay? So we can actually get the text, we can get the hyperlink, we can get the class, all of that stuff can be done using uh, 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 what uh, Python, Python or so. So you can even say that, okay, I want to loop through all the, uh, 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 all the anchors and I only want to get the uh, hyper reference uh, attribute that's inside the link. All right, so I just want to look at all these uh, and you can see how easily we can write a for loop to uh, list down all the uh, links inside the web page. Okay, so uh, and then I can also do get text. That means I do not want all the junk, all the HTML uh, junk that comes with the web page. I can just do dot get text and I can extract all the content from the page. All right, so. 
so then let's begin. All right. Um, I'm going to be uh, quite uh, dynamic about my programming because at this point, I hope that you are also comfortable uh, using this uh, for yourself. So um, you can, uh, we can begin together. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, assign a variable called tables. All right. And then I'm going to uh, find all. All right. And I'm going to say that I'm going to look for the tables. All right. And uh, no, it's, it should be singular. And then I'm going to uh, remove this, remove this and remove this. And then I am going to uh, print out the table, right? So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's picked up, uh, what is, it's got a lot of content. Okay, maybe that was not a good idea. Uh, maybe I will uh, print out the length of tables. So there are 28 elements that have been uh, pulled in as tables. So if we go back to the uh, script, maybe it's just easier to just do view. And if I were to find, just close this and this, and we did control F and we did table. Okay, we have 82 tables, all right? So let's make it a bit more specific. I'm looking for that, okay. So you can see that it picked up 28 tables, exactly like what we have inside our Python code. All right, so we've got 28 tables. Now let's dive in uh, specifically to that one particular table that we want to uh, listen to. Okay, so I think the easiest way is to, um, there was some operating, what was that table again? Operating support, system support. So let's look at a table where the class is called a uh, wiki table, okay? So let's just check whether it is the only one. Okay, so this one has got wiki table. So what we can do is um, we can actually uh, customize our search, all right? A little bit more and say that uh, we want to put in the class all right, which is the attribute, okay? So you can see it's already asking you for an attribute and it must be of a dictionary, I mean, a tuple type. So we can put class equal, all right, wiki table, all right? And now let's see what happens. Uh, I may need to put it inside, uh, oops. One second. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, I make this mistake because uh, uh, my memory fails me. Uh, it needs a little bit of an underscore uh, to indicate that is the particular attribute uh, that you're looking for. Now we have gotten only one table. So you can see how easily we can uh, search through the uh, uh, entire page and pick up exactly what we are looking for. Now, this is only good if you know what you're looking for. So that's why I always advise for you to uh, 
look at the source code and then start to drill down uh, uh, the data, all right? Okay, so uh, any questions so far? Is it been clear? Is it been easy? Uh, because this is really, really powerful. If there's anything you want to search on the web, you can actually use this. Okay, so now, um, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm gonna continue on just uh, another two minutes uh, before we take a break, all right? So uh, what happens is inside the table, right? So I can actually do a loop for uh, row in, table, which is uh, tables, all right? So I'm looking at the first table because there's only one value, find all, okay? I am going to do uh, TR. TR means table row. You can see that the, the header is called TH and the row is actually called uh, uh, TR. Okay, so every row will have a TR and TD. TD means uh, column, all right? So I'm going to find all of that and I am going to now, uh, uh, the column will be the, the row, right? Uh, find all uh, TD. All right, the reason why I'm able to do this is because I kind of understand what uh, uh, HTML is all about. And then uh, I can do uh, uh, print column uh, text. All right, so we can see uh, what's inside the cell, right? So we can just run it. Uh, what is going on? It doesn't like the word text. So let's just print it out for now and see what happens. Okay, so we have managed to um, pick up uh, some content. So there are some empty uh, columns, right, uh, in empty rows, and then it starts by the first cell, uh, TD row. So I think uh, we have to uh, uh, we have to do a check if uh, so. It's it's uh, it's an empty array. So what we do is uh, if the length of column is equal to zero, then continue. I'm just cleaning it up so that it doesn't, what I mean is that when the length is zero, which you can see here, uh, that means there's nothing inside, um, uh, uh, continue to the next element. Okay, so what I have done is I have cleaned up my, my text, all right? Now, if I did text, let's see whether it just prints out the text. It still doesn't like it because the result has no attribute uh, as you probably treating a list of items like a single item. Uh, did you call find all when you meant call find? Oh, okay. Hmm. Anyway, uh, what happens is find all becomes an array. So I'm assuming that uh, 
so I think I may need to put this and then see whether that works. Yes. All right. So you can see now I have picked up just the text. All right. So now let's look at what exactly, how does it all fit inside here? So I, so basically zero is this, this column right here, isn't it? No, this column right here. So it's got, uh, let me just shrink my screen a bit. So if we look at it from the table perspective, uh, we've managed to pull up iPhone OS 1.0, this column right here, very neatly inside uh, in, this, uh, in this particular format. And just let's look, look at how it's handling uh, iPhone 14.1. So it's got two values inside here, all right? So it's got uh, two values inside here, and then it's got the legend and all of this stuff that is in here. So uh, we must be careful when we are importing stuff like this. So what we want to do is we want to um, uh, not, we do not want to uh, include uh, this column, right? So how do we do that? And uh, how, how the easiest way would be to, uh, so we have, we want to be, uh, 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 we want to uh, reduce uh, find so tables is going to give me the entire table then I'm going to find the row so this is going to be an array so what I can do is I can actually remember the last time I can do minus one that means I'm going back I'm I'm removing uh, minus one so let's run it again okay and the last line is still there so maybe can I do minus two because that is going to come out as an array. Okay, so now I cleanly have removed the last two rows at the bottom of the, of the page, which I do not need, all right? I think I just uh, killed the page. Never mind, I can always open it again. So uh, you have to be very patient. Uh, it's, a, it's a long uh, process, but once you are a master at this, you can do it pretty uh, pretty quickly, all right? So let's investigate why this, this column is not showing, all right? So if we looked at the data, it's actually uh, starting from here because um, it's showing uh, iPhone 1 iOS and it's the, it's TH, TD, all right? So it is missing the TH column. All right, so there is a, a header uh, here and then followed by the TD. So because our for loop is looping through the T, TR, we are ignoring the TH, okay? So that's why uh, we are not able to look at this particular um, uh, column because this column is now uh, looking at uh, uh, this is actually defined as a header, and this is actually looking as uh, as the row. So the row is actually starting here, but uh, the the HTML design is such such that it's uh, uh, inside the cell. Inside this, you actually have a a row, and um, so I think uh, what we can do is. Uh, we can actually improve our search because if you look at our search, the, the row is correct, okay? But the only thing is that there is a TH, maybe there's a TD, both together. So we can improve our search here, find, uh, we can actually put it in an array, all right? So we can actually add uh, TH to this. 
Okay, so when we do that, uh, we are specifying that I want, so now you can see that I have picked up uh, iPhone and uh, uh, I picked up the first column uh, like how uh, we, we want. So, so we've got model with OS Max. So now we have to look at where is this with OS Max is actually uh, coming from. So if you look at, you have, uh, you have uh, TD and then you have model and then release. Uh, so model, then you have another T row here. All right, so this is actually coming from uh, this, uh, this first row and uh, the second row, the first row and second row. So how would you remove the first and second row? Very easy. We can just say start from the second row. So it will remove the first row, uh, the zeroth row and first and second row. So let's try it. So it's got max. So what, what we shall do is just one more and voila, we've got the uh, columns uh, pieced out like this, all right? So now what would be the, the second uh, column uh, would be, I can do column, uh, can I do uh, one dot text? Let's see what that, that shows. I should be a comma, right? So you can see that now um, it's got the second row to it, all right? So you can see that column is now going to be uh, an array, okay? So in order to put this into uh, uh, a table, uh, I wanna put it into a new array. So what I will do is I will create a new array. So this is my data. I'm going to create it as an empty array. And then I'm going to say that, uh, uh, in, I'm going to go into a for loop and then I'm going to put uh, my data, uh, which is uh, inside a column, all right? And I'm going to loop through it. So I'm going to put data uh, and uh, so inside data is an array. So I can actually do um, I column. That means I is the, sorry, not one, I. I is the index, okay, index, and the value will be column, um, uh, sorry, uh, D, all right, D dot text. So maybe if you are not familiar with what I'm doing, um, I will just uh, um, print it out so that you will see what is happening. Uh, first I'll print out I, and then I'll print out D. All right, so you can see that for yourself, not dev, D. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out because we will revisit this uh, again. What have I done? I just want to put an S command next to it, yeah. So, uh, and I want to break after the first row. So what I do is I come back here and I just do break and that will tell me to exit the for loop, all right? Okay, so it's not uh, taking up that value. Uh, let me see how else I can do this. The easiest way I think would be to just uh, create a new variable called i, let i equal to zero. And uh, after each line, we just increment i by one, okay? So i will just keep incrementing in here and you can see the value of i.
Maybe I should use a bend and not. Therefore, I don't need the eye. Yeah. So you can see now I have managed to, uh, uh, I printed D. So let me just do D text. So you can see that I is the first uh, I zero. So I, I have not allowed it to increment. Uh, so I don't need I. So, and I can, you can see that uh, it's picked up all the values inside uh, the column. All right, so if you look at beautiful iPhone, it's picked up all these values uh, inside the, So we have managed to read uh, this column right here. All right, and uh, uh, this is how we actually, uh, sorry, this column, and we picked up the entire row of data. Sorry, we are looking at it this way. So we went all the way to the end. So we can actually now uh, write a program to complete this, uh, to, to extract it into a CSV file. So what I'll do now is I will take a 15 minute break because um, I'll just give you all time to uh, regroup, uh, come back at 11.15 and we will continue. There's a question there by Radha. Could you run through? Have you answered that? Uh, no, I haven't even seen it yet. Let me look at it. Okay, sure. Uh, could you run through the cloud scraper and beautiful soap? Do we need both or are we connected? Uh, okay. Um, actually, uh, you, you don't need a beautiful uh, cloud scraper. You can straight away uh, begin by... Uh, uh, actually, it's just easier to just... Um, uh, to do it the way I have done it because uh, this is just checking whether the status code is 200. When the status code is 200, means that you can read this page, right? You can read this page and this page is uh, available to be read. And that is what uh, Cloud Scraper actually does, all right? Beautiful Soap is a different uh, library that talks about uh, how to read inside the page once you have read it. So there are two things happening here. Okay. So it's always good practice to, to, uh, to check whether the page is available and it's able to be read, then proceed by using beautiful soap to uh, read into the text. Because you see, we have to pass the HTML content inside beautiful soap. So they've performed two different tasks. Okay, so I'm just showing you how we can now use the beautiful soap or the page soap uh, soup to find uh, specific things inside the page. So we are looking for table and where the attribute class is equal to wiki table. So that gives us a result of one table. Then from that one table, I'm going to now start uh, extracting the row and columns and start creating uh, a table of my own that I can use for my uh, data science. I will be right here, uh, but you can take a 15 minute break and come back. Okay, so, uh, so I hope everyone was able to follow the simple example of how to scrape a website. So now moving forward, uh, you would have to do some, uh, I would say maneuvering 
so that you can get uh, the result cleaned up uh, the way you would want it. So what I did was I added this line so I can show you why I did that is because um, we are now putting together whatever we've learned before and, and we are trying to develop something uh, that is very useful for ourselves. So, so what I have done is I have uh, created an empty array called a list array called data. And now I'm going to loop through the, the entire table the, because there's only one table. So I'm only looking at the first table. So I put tab zero and then I'm finding all rows starting from the third uh, row. Uh, that means the from I'm listing down all the rows inside this table, the first table, and I'm talking starting from the third row till the second last row, all right? And inside each row, there are columns, okay? I'm finding all the header and the cells and creating it into an array called column. And if any column is empty, I'm skipping it. And then I'm creating a new uh, array called uh, data row, and I'm adding the column data into it, okay? Inside data row. And then once the column is completed, when it reaches the end of the column, I'm putting the entire row into my main data uh, object, okay? So you can see that this is going to loop through the entire table and put it into an array called data. So very shortly, you can see that uh, it's going to print out the values of uh, what's inside data. So what's inside data is, uh, you can see that it's a two-dimensional array because there's an array inside an array. So the first uh, element is the iPhone. Then we have uh, iPhone, iOS, and then you can see that there's something very unique here. All right. So if I were to find out what this is, if I go back to my view source, I find it's actually a HTML entity tag. So you can see that it's a uh, ampersand hash 160 colon that is being put here, you can see that it's all over the place, all right? So when it's all over the place, it's actually uh, what it is. If you want to find out what it is, you just have to go to the HTML um, entities page, all right? It's already here. It's defined uh, already here as a non-breaking space. That means it's just an empty space. So we can also use non-blank uh, space, non-breaking space as a string, or you can also give it as a number. So this information is actually not uh, uh, very useful, but it's just creating a space in between. But for us, it's not looking very good because it's, got, it's not actually creating a space. So what I did was, I uh, now you can see that now it's converted it into a hexadecimal because uh, we are passing it as a, um, the parser that we are using here is called a HTML parser. So it's, it's trying to make sense of it, all right? So the easiest way to get rid of it is to replace it, all right? And that's what I've done here. So by replacing, so you can see, I just did dot text, dot replace. Remember text is going, it's, an, it's a type of a string. So because it's a string, I can do a replace method on top of it. So whenever I see this, it's going to replace it with an empty space. So you can see that once I run it again, and then I run this again, you can see that now it's been removed, all right? So I can also uh, uh, remove the new line by doing this. So I can just copy dot text uh, replace again and put it behind that. And this time I can put slash n and, uh, and I do not want to put a space. So I can also do that. So I, you, can, you can see that this is very unique to the data set, all right? So whatever table that you want to read suddenly may have uh, function, uh, stuff in there that may corrupt it. So this is how we actually clean it up, all right? So once we have cleaned it up to a pretty decent table, we can actually call our good friend called Pandas, all right? And we can create our data frame using pandas and, and uh, just by importing pandas and then running 
the data frame and putting the data. Why we do this is because we want to know what sort of, how many columns we have, uh, what sort of object. So you can see all of them are string, string objects. And then uh, we can do some description uh, about how many values we have, uh, how many unique values and the top value, the frequency. So it's already made sense of this uh, data frame. So after this, you are, you are good to go. So you, you basically can do uh, loads of these functions to see what's inside the table. And then you can start applying your uh, data science uh, or research, or you can even copy, save it to an Excel file or save it into a CSV file or anything like that for later purpose. So I hope this was helpful, learning how to scrape uh, web pages. So now the, the playground is the entire internet, you know, um, I just show you, yeah, this similar can be used to get content, simple DB in an Excel, uh, et cetera. Uh, simple DB as in database. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that one is already uh, quite easy, right? Because you can just, uh, click on content drive and let's say uh, I'll just do connect to my drive. And then uh, this is using uh, code lab. I can, um, uh, what is that? Upload an Excel file. Uh, so you see, you see, I'm already looking at my drive, all right? So um, I can do, um, first I can look at my drive or I can even upload a file. So if I want to upload a file, I can look at uh, Excel files, right? So do I have an Excel file? Uh, attendance participant. Okay, so um, uh, if I am not mistaken, I can just do um, attendance equals to PD read Excel and put in, I'll just copy this copy part and stick it in here. And then um, I can just do uh, attendance dot head. So I've actually opened, uh, I've actually picked up the file from, uh, from, uh, from the Excel file. Is this what you're asking for? Or are you trying to say that now you want to save the data, you want to save this into an Excel file? That's also possible. So what I can do is I can do uh, df.save, okay? And then I can put in the file name, uh, iPhone uh, data dot, uh, no, I need to uh, specify the format. So I have to use, uh, uh, one, 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 one moment, let me just check uh, how to do uh, pandas save, uh, Excel. So I think it's like this uh, to Excel, then I can just put the file name. Uh, it should be XLSX, right? And uh, let me just check the part. So it has to be slash content for it to point to this location. So let me just append this slash content in front of the file and run it. 
Okay, and then I should uh, refresh and voila, it's here. And now I can download this. Okay, so it's asking me where to save it, put it in my downloaded folder, save. So it's already recognized it as an Excel file. So now I can open it. So it's created it as an Excel file for me. So this is one of the benefits of web scraping. Okay. So now the internet has become a much closer place. You can extract a lot of information, convert it into Excel or CSV file, whatever, for any sort of research or any sort of investigation you want to do uh, and stuff like that. Okay. So, yep, this is how uh, you actually do web scraping. Okay. Alrighty, so now, um, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm just going to quick, I'm, I'm going to remove this, this part of it because this is not uh, required, but um, all this is good. So I will uh, save this and I will save this uh, as a GitHub in my GitHub so that you have, access to it. Alrighty, so you can actually download uh, this page and keep it as a reference. And this is not an exhaustive uh, example. Um, okay, uh, today's assignment. Okay, oh yeah. Uh, Actually, I, I, I uh, the, uh, the assignment is actually, uh, I, just, I just did it for you. <laughs> the assignment was to uh, scrape a page. And um, so maybe I will create an assignment now. Okay, so maybe uh, you can use the same page, which is the so you can do the same thing um, for what I have done, but now I'm asking you to pull out the A tag, okay? So intelligently, you need to go and modify uh, right here, what exactly you want to pull out, okay? So um, there's actually quite a few A tags. So maybe we shall see uh, which A tag specifically, um, So you can see that the A tags are all over the place. So it's gonna get a lot of A tags. Um, so the A tags have a attribute called title. 
So maybe I will make it a bit more simple and make, make it a bit more specific and ask you to uh, pull out the, the title where uh, it's uh, very specifically uh, targeting uh, maybe Let's say when the title is equal to 15. So that way it'll be a lot more specific uh, to, to that. Okay, it's very, very simple, very easy. Just have to think a little bit out of the box and you should be able to uh, complete this assignment.